joining us now to look at the latest developments in Brazil is Vinicius de Carvalho. He is the former director of the Brazil Institute over at King's College London. Vinicius, good to have you on the show. Um, all right, let, let's take a look at this from uh, 10,000 meters. I mean, looking at what's transpired since Sunday, I know there's a lot of it, uh, emotions that sort of uh, predates the inauguration that happened uh, it recently. I'm wondering what this says when you have thousands of supporters of a former president uh, ransacking uh, democratic institutions across the country. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. Um, I think what we saw on Sunday, it's not one event, isolated event. It's something that must be put into a context, a broader context, uh, and looking uh, the protests that start just after the results of the election in Brazil. We saw block roads all over the country. We saw these com uh, campings in front of military barracks asking for a military intervention in the country. We also saw, most recently, in days before the inauguration of Lula in Brasilia, a bomb that has been put into a truck, uh, a fuel truck, close to the airport in Brasilia. So we have seen an escalation of uh, these protests that culminate on what happened on Sunday. So um, what we need to look here is that we see a part of the population that don't accept, still don't accept the results of this election. Um, what is absurd, of course, due to the, the confirmation by all the powers and all the democratic institutions of Brazil of the election of Lula. What also needs to be put into, into consideration here is that uh, Lula and his new government needs to really take control of the agenda, because if they don't do now, right there now, um, they will be also reacting constantly to other protest, protests or actions that can come out of what just happened on Sunday. We should not think that because they are demobilizing from the barracks or from the camps in front of the barracks, um, that this movement is under control. Uh, Brazilian government, both the government, federal government, the judiciary, they need to look quite carefully to who are sponsoring the, those activities, who are the groups that are organizing these activities and making them uh, continue after three months of the results of the elections. Yeah. I mean, that's why uh, Luciane in her news package said the, that they're looking for the ringleaders. Uh, let me ask you a question. Um, I'm wondering if it's just uh, that some people don't accept the results of the election or is it they don't really accept Lula? Because perhaps President Lula's uh, past, the fact that he was a prisoner, could come into the equation. I mean, you may have some Brazilians that just don't accept the idea that a person convicted of a crime could actually hold the country's highest office. Uh, I think both both uh, hypotheses are connected, but I don't think if it was a different candidate, uh, those supporters of Bolsonaro would be taken easy as well if there was not Bolsonaro. No? So what we see here is, it's it, hypothetically, of course, we cannot imagine what would happen if it was not Lula running. But um, I don't think that supporters of Bolsonaro would accept any result if it was not Bolsonaro's victory. He declared that before, during the campaign, that he would not accept any result if it was not his victory. He was so convinced that he had the majority of the population. Okay, let, let me flip the question around then. You say that, uh, you know, if, if, it wasn't, uh, uh, if it was a different candidate, you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect the same thing. What happens if Bolsonaro wasn't in this election? I mean, if he wasn't such a uh, politically divisive si uh, figure, would you still see supporters of a losing candidate resort to such actions? Um, what something is important to consider, what Lula said uh, exactly just after the, his first reaction to the attacks, he, he mentioned that, uh, even in the hardest times, uh, we didn't see any PT members or even supporters of Lula acting in such violence against the powers of the Republic. And he's right about that. Protests has happened in Brasilia, but never ever the three palaces of the three powers were invaded and destroyed, as we saw on Sunday. If Bolsonaro had been elected, uh, considering uh, the, the tradition of democracy that has been established in Brazil, I believe that... Those who lose the election would accept, as the Bolsonaro and his supporters should be doing right now as well. Okay, Vinicius de Carvalho, thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. Do appreciate listening to your analysis. Thank you.